In today's video, we will be exploring zenithal highlighting. You might have noticed that in more than half of my videos, I start the project by using a zenithal highlight of some sort before even starting the painting process. The question is, why do I do that and how do I decide whether I should use it or not? Should you be using it too? And if yes, how? Let's see if we can answer some of those questions in this video. Hey guys, I'm Zoltan and you're watching Phalanx Miniatures. Zenithal highlighting or priming is a technique where you first prime the miniature in a dark color and then spray it again from above at a roughly 45 degree angle with a lighter color. This can be achieved the easiest with an airbrush, but it is also doable with spray cans and if you have none of those available, you can imitate the result with dry brushing as well. Alright, that's all well and good, but what is it good for? It actually does a lot of different things, some of them good, some of them not so good depending on what you want to achieve, so let's go through the positives first. Making out the details on a mini that is primed pure black or white can be quite difficult, especially when there are a lot of intricate details on it, since there are no lights and shadows to inform your eyes where one element starts and the other ends. If you do the zenithal correctly, the lighter color should hit only the raised areas, leaving the deeper parts of the mini in shadows. This creates contrast between those raised elements and the recesses, making it much easier for your eyes to separate different elements on the model and ultimately making the painting process easier on the eyes. If you want to go for a paint job that is a bit more complex and uses volumetric highlights, you probably want to know where to put those highlights. So if you're fine with a fairly standard light placement imitating the sunlight coming from above, then the zenithal will definitely help. You can imagine that your airbrush or spray can is the sun and the paint coming out is the light hitting the model from above. Wherever the light paint hits the model is where the light should be. But it doesn't only help you figuring out where to put your highlights with the brush, you can also create a fully highlighted model by spraying over the zenithal highlight with an airbrush. Acrylic paints are naturally transparent, so even if you use paint with good coverage, there will be still a difference between the end result over the white and the black surfaces. This creates natural transitions on bigger elements like armor panels and contrast between the shadows and the highlights, making the model look much more interesting and natural to your eyes. If you paint over a black primer, it doesn't matter how good the coverage of your paint is, you will still lose some of the vibrancy of the color. A zenithal prime helps with this, since losing vibrancy in the shadows is actually a good thing, but you will get the full colors of your paint to shine on the zenithally highlighted parts, where the light would hit them and the colors should actually pop. Contrast paints are meant to be used over a bright primer because they are quite transparent and they would not be able to cover black. But if you use them over a pure white or light grey primer as intended, they will produce the typical contrast paint look, which is quite artificial and makes the mini look like a cheap toy. Which it isn't cheap I mean, so ideally it shouldn't look like that either. But if you apply the contrast paints over a zenithal highlight, it will produce way more contrast since it will leave the natural shadows dark by not covering them fully and create some awesome vibrant colors over the zenithally highlighted parts. Contrast paints become truly contrasty over zenithal and the end result looks way more natural to the eye. Okay, we covered all the positives, so let's talk about the negatives as well. Fortunately, there are much less of those. First of all, it destroys the shadows on the mini. And I know I listed this among the positives before, but I'm talking about different shadows here. It creates some nice natural shadows at the underside of the mini and on its volumes, but it destroys the shadows in all the crevices that are not facing down or are not covered by some of the other elements. This is not such a big issue if you use contrast paints, since those will darken the recesses organically, but if you use normal acrylics, you will need to take this into account and you need to shade those crevices in some way, for example with an oil wash or by plain old black lining. This can be especially problematic in deeper parts of the mini, like for example the joints that are harder to reach. With a black primer, if you can't reach them with your brush, they would remain organically black, which works quite well for shadows obviously, white not so much. Zenithal highlighting also creates more work that you have to do later on. This is basically the end result of the previous point, but I think it's worth emphasizing. If you paint over a fully black primer, you can simply start working on the various elements, painting your way up from black all the way up to your highest highlight. The black can simply become your deepest shadow and whatever you can't reach with your brush can simply remain black. If you have a zenithal highlight, you will have to make sure that every element is either base coated or blocked in with black first, making sure you eliminate all the white and then start painting from there. Personally, I use zenithal highlights in three different ways most of the time, so let's go through those. The first one is as a form of underpainting for contrast paints. I use this mainly when I want to paint a warband or a squad that lends itself to contrast painting, meaning that they have a lot of details and not a lot of smooth surfaces. I simply prime them in this black, although you can also use other dark colors like red for example. Then load diluted white paint into the airbrush. If you have white airbrush paint, you can simply use that out of the bottle. I make sure to set the pressure of my airbrush to relatively high, something between 20 and 30 psi. If you spray at lower pressure, you can get speckling, which is not ideal if you want smooth gradients. 
I hold the mini and the airbrush in a way that the spray hits from above. I start from directly above and then move the airbrush around a bit to deliberately hit some parts I want brighter, but always making sure to not go further than something like 45 degrees from the middle, otherwise it just becomes a white primer. I want to deliberately keep the dark paint in the shadows. If I did it correctly, the mini should be almost completely white from the top and completely black from the bottom and from the front it should have transitions between those colors. Once the zenithal is done, I can start the process of base coating with contrast paints by brush and thanks to the zenithal I will have much nicer results than with a simple bright primer. The second method is an underpainting for spraying on base color. I use this mostly for a single model or squads when there is a lot of smooth surfaces and a single color is dominating the color scheme. Space Marines are great examples for this since they have large smooth armor panels that cover 80% of the model and are usually a single color. The method is essentially the same as before except I am likely to use some color other than black for the original primer. For example a very dark red works great for blue or yellow armor. But after that I will go for the same white from above. But when the zenithal is done, I continue with the airbrush. I take the mid-tone, basically the color that I want most of the model to be, and spray it all over. I don't mind if I hit the shadows with it, but I mostly concentrate on the brighter elements. If I want a more contrasty and vibrant result, I can use contrast paints or inks to achieve this, but diluted normal acrylics work as well. If I did it correctly, I will end up with fully painted armor panels that have some nice transitions on them and some organic highlights and shadows on the model. If I want to, I can just block in the other colors and call it a day, or I can keep highlighting for better results. You can base coat and highlight entire squats in half an hour with this method. The third one is for creating transitions and vibrancy. This one is kinda niche but very useful, because some colors are notoriously difficult to highlight and if you want to go for those smooth transitions and vibrant colors that some of those pro painters use, then this is one way of doing it. Unlike the other methods, this one you can use on an already painted model or parts of it. Let's say you want to go for a super vibrant red cape for example. You can paint the cape red with your favorite red acrylic color, then you come in with the white zenithal over that, only hitting the raised folds of the cloak. Then you take a red ink or contrast paint and spray it on top of that zenithal. The end result should be a nice transition between your original red and the super vibrant brighter red on top of the folds where the light hits them. So to conclude, the zenithal highlight can be very useful both for army painting as well as for high quality single models as long as you understand when it's working for you and when it's working against you. As with most techniques, it's not going to solve all your problems, but it can be a great tool in your arsenal to solve at least some of them. That's all for today's video, thank you very much for watching and of course, as usual, don't forget to subscribe and like, let me know if you want to see any other topic on the channel and see you in the next one.